Please be seated, everyone. Your Excellency, Mrs. McGurdy, Mayor Jonathan, Council Mackay, Sunshine Coast councillors, and I can see nearly every one of them here today. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, one and all. I'm Mike Whitaker, I'm the CEO of Sunshine Coast Council. It is my pleasure to welcome you here today to the official opening of the Mary Cancross Scenic Reserve Rainforest Discovery Centre. And we brought a little bit of rain to really put that forest into place and it'll just sprout and all the wildlife will be there for you to have a look later on. Today, I have the pleasure of introducing you to our speakers. His Excellency, the Governor of Queensland, the Honourable Paul de Jersey AC, Mayor Mark Jamison, Councillor Jenny Mackay, Uncle Kenny Murphy of the Ginnaburra people, Mr Chris Brooker from Rotary, and artist Lindsay Pollock. Before we get underway, I'd like to take you through a brief, brief walk back in time. In 1902, Andrew Vine purchased the land we stand on here today. In May 1941, the records of the former Landsborough Shire Council show that a letter from Elizabeth Vine, or Bessie, as she was known, advised Council of her desire and commitment to protect this area. The larger section of 57 hectares was held by a sister, Mabel and Mary, and the other portion, 43 acres, or acres, sorry, gone a bit metric, 57 acres and 43 acres, was held by Bessie. These two blocks were formed to create the 100 acres. The three sisters must, must have really had great foresight to understand how valuable this land is for us and for the future generations. And today, we stand here with this fantastic building. What a building. And I think you know, it's the local producers and the produce, that's what the materials that are in it, that are extraordinary. To begin the proceedings, I'd like to invite Kenny Murphy, elder of the Ginnaburra people, to perform, perform the Welcome to Country. Kenny. I thought it was five when we did it, but I've kind of changed the number. Yeah. Um, I've got a bit of some stuff here written down. Uh, my name's Kenny Murphy. I'm a senior elder of the Ginnaburra people. Um, we got our determination for our country in 2012, on, on 20th of uh, November. And um, we are officially now the traditional owners for our area. Um, uh, Michael Gillies has actually contacted me to, to come up here to, to do some some programs with this, with this uh, centre, and I was happy to do it. And I just spoke to the lady here that I thank you very much for my heart from the dinner by our people for saving the land, saving that and looking after that, because that's all we want. That's all we want it to be protected and all that. So it's a great thing that's happening up here. Um, and we will, you know, we'll endeavour to stay with it and work with it and, 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 and help the group out as much as we can, especially Michael, because Michael's all pushing me, and, you know, and the Lord Mary, he's not as much, so he's there, but... I've got one out there gang up on me, you know? <laughs> but... Good job. <laughs> um, uh, you know, like, I think everyone knows pretty well about the history of the place, here in the Glasshouse Mountains, and, you know, Captain Cook name and all that sort of stuff, but we, you know, we about people who have been here for a long time, we, We've been moved around and, and, and taken from, from our, our country and, and our clan. Jamison. Well, thank you, Michael, very much, and uh, good morning, everyone. It's uh, not at all surprising to see such a fantastic crowd here this morning, given the significance uh, of this very important site. Um, can I welcome you all to the beautiful Sunshine Coast and to the official opening of the Mary Cancross Scenic Reserve Rainforest Discovery Centre. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge the family who are here with us, um, uh, and in particular the Governor and I have just been having a good talk to them. Uh, I want to particularly welcome the Governor of Queensland, His Excellency the Honourable Paul de Jersey, and his wife Mrs de Jersey. It's lovely to have you here with us today. Uh, it's uh, a real pleasure for you to be visiting. Um, 
the rain, I think, has been uh, ceremonial uh, in terms of uh, this particular opening. A, a rainforest um, um, discovery centre wouldn't be the same without rain. Also, I want to acknowledge Ken uh, and the traditional owners of the land on which this meeting takes place, the peoples of the Jinnabara First Nation, Nation, and pay my respects to their elders, past and present. Uh, I also want to acknowledge the friends of Mary Kencross, uh, led by their president, Sue Tanner, um, all of my councillor colleagues who are here, certainly the volunteers uh, who do a great job, uh, ladies and gentlemen, one and all, and in particular, uh, our younger generation, Isabel and Max, who are here from the Mullaney uh, State School to make a presentation to the Governor of the New Jersey. After uh, months of community consultation, three years of design, and a $4.7 million bill, we're standing here today, and I'm sure you'll agree, in one of the most impressive buildings on our Sunshine Coast. One that blends perfectly with our amazing environment. Creating a building such as this uh, in the middle of such an incredibly sensitive area is not without its challenges, I'm sure you'll appreciate. But the designers, the builders, uh, and the builders have done an outstanding job in meeting those challenges head on. We chose to use many natural materials in the building, uh, 140 tonnes of local stone and rock, working with these materials uh, in, time, in time intensive and laborious, but the results really do speak for themselves. All 3,000 plants used in the landscaping were grown from local seeds and cuttings collected from the reserve and grown just down the road. Uh, the raised boardwalk was created not with heavy machinery, but with vacuum excavation, ensuring no roots would be damaged during the construction. All of the structural elements were craned into position from two gaps in the canopy with pinpoint accuracy. Amazing, quite amazing and I'm sure a nail-biting experience for those who were involved in dealing with that confined space. We've had wildlife and reptiles entering the site regularly, as you would expect, and these have been carefully removed and relocated to ensure their safety. I'd like to recognise the outstanding efforts of our designers, Guyman Bailey Architects and Norman Richards, and our builder, uh, Hutchinson's, represented by Michael uh, Michelle today, who have more than delivered uh, in uh, overcoming many of these challenges. I'd also like to thank interpretive display designers, Focus Productions, who have created an outstanding sensory, forward-thinking and interactive space in which to learn. And I'm sure many people here today and those that visit in future will certainly learn. Uh, our new interpretive centre meets the future head on while remembering and respecting our past. New technology allows visitors to interact in augmented reality and specialist display enables visitors to see the forest by night. Economically, this project has created around 260 jobs. 90 odd percent of those will go to Sunshine Coast locals. Uh, so that was a really outstanding effort as well. We're also, sorry, we're also expecting to draw more visitors, uh, which will undoubtedly have an ongoing effect on local business. And whilst the view uh, from Mary Cantross of the Grasshouse Mountains and beyond hasn't changed, um, certainly the facilities for both uh, visitors and tourists, people conferencing here, and certainly for our volunteers is much improved. And in our 50th year of being called the Sunshine Coast, it is very fitting that we open this new building and celebrate our visionary forebears, like the Thyme sisters, Elizabeth, Mabel, and Mary, and their brother Ted. They left us the legacy that is Mary Cancross Scenic Reserve, helping to develop a unique regional identity which is smart, healthy and creative, uh, and embraced by locals uh, of our community and the many visitors that come here alike. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome this morning. It now gives me great pleasure on your behalf and indeed on behalf of the 300,000 citizens of the Sunshine Coast to introduce and welcome the Governor of Queensland, His Excellency, the Honourable Paul de Jersey. Welcome. Thank you, Mayor Jamison, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys. I, with respect to Kenny, also at once acknowledge, with respect to all elders, 
the traditional custodians of these lands and I thank you, Mr Murphy, for your work in the country. It is, Kays, and my enormous pleasure that we join you today on this most significant occasion in the life of the Mary Cancross Reserve and the Sunshine Coast. In doing so, today I find myself following uh, rather remarkably and marvellously from my point of view in the footsteps of some of my distinguished predecessor governors. Kay and I have just driven up the Blackwall Range, named after our state's second governor, Sir Samuel Blackwall. And it was Queensland's 17th governor, Sir Henry Abel Smith, who officially opened the reserve in 1961. That occasion took place some 20 years after the land was gifted to the council by the Thine sisters, Mabel, Mary and Elizabeth, who sought to preserve this remarkable pocket of sub subtropical rainforest in perpetuity, in doing so honouring their mother, Mary Cancross. And it's wonderful to have the descendants here with us today. Uh, wonderfully counterpoised, I thought, by Isabel and Max, representing the vibrant youth, you are vibrant, you are vibrant in your own way, of course, too, and we recognise that today. But wonderful to see the heritage aspect represented by the descendants here today, and, and the youth of the Sunshine Coast represented by undoubtedly potentially great achievers in, in the school captains. The Rainforest Discovery Centre, which I will soon officially open, is a highly fitting and appropriate addition to this reserve. Not only does the centre take maximum advantage of the magnificent views across to the Glasshouse Mountains, but it ensures that future visitors will leave the reserve with a much better understanding of its immense environmental and conservation value in line with the intention and legacy of the Fine Sisters. And what an impressive, modern, edifying precinct this is, one of which the entire community can be immensely proud. As Governor, I also wholeheartedly applaud the community spirit which denotes the ongoing preservation of the reserve and this Rainforest Discovery Centre project. It is the enthusiastic contributions of the reserve's many staff and volunteers, the Rotary Club of Mullaney members, and members of the Friends of the Mary Cancross Association and many others, all of whom ensure it remains such a unique and cherished part of our state. And I know the hundreds of thousands of annual visitors are highly appreciative of your efforts. I also acknowledge and applaud the Sunshine Coast Regional Council for its wonderful efforts in securing this, and also the Queensland and Australian governments for their large financial support, and indeed all of the project partners for their attention to this region, a region which I tell you today is so crucial to defining the psyche of our state, what it means to be Queenslanders. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your contribution to that, to that very important goal. It now gives me very great pleasure in this 50th anniversary year since the official naming of the Sunshine Coast region to declare officially open the Mary Cancross Scenic Reserve Rainforest Discovery Centre. Thank you all. I'd now like to invite Chris Brooker from the Rotary Club of Mullane to the microphone. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Excellency, Excellency, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I congratulate Sunshine Coast Council for their foresight in upgrading the facilities here to the magnificent structure in which we are, and thank you for inviting me to talk as recognition of Rotary's involvement in what is one of the longest running projects involving Rotary in Australia, 58 years. Unfortunately, sometimes the history of our contribution to the reserve gets lost in the annals of time and records. We're just going to walk back a little bit through some of the history here. 
Photos of the original opening show Sir Henry Abel Smith escorted by two Rotarians, Norm Peace's past president and Vic Waddle as the then current president. In this talk here today, I have relied heavily on the book Rotary Mullaney, written by Jack Wilcox OAM, and my own recollections. In October 1959, after the club had discussions with Lancashire Council and in consultation with Elizabeth Thine, it was agreed that the new Rotary Club would create and maintain the reserve <coughs> sanctuary as the club's first major project. Without Rotary, this reserve wouldn't have happened and we have been involved with the reserve and various capabilities since then. The Charter President, Norm Tesh, wished to have the reserve open in October 1960. Thousands of hours of volunteer work over the next two decades by Rotary members, wives, their children and friends turned the 100 acres of natural scrub into an enduring tourist attraction. Almost every weekend, most of the members worked to clear dead trees in Lantana, clear and establish walking tracks from the original sticking tracks, dig toilets, remove rubbish, there's no wheelie bins back then, identify and name trees, erect shelter sheds, water tanks and toilet blocks, tables and fireplaces, and mow the grass. If you see the grass out the front there now, and you see the types of mowers we have now, go back and imagine 12 Rotarians with old victors in a line every weekend trying to keep it down. The can at the front was erected as a memorial to Mary Wilhelmina Cancross in 1964, so Henry Abel Smith again did the honours. In 1968, the small bridge over the creek down the back was another Rotary project. 1985 saw the replacement of tables and perimeter posts, and in 1987, the Rickson Burnett Walk was declared. Rickson was a Charter Rotarian and Shire Council and very probably pivotal in the original talks between Rotary and Lansford Council. In 1989, Rotary funded and constructed a children's program, a children's playground, and Apex built the fence along the side of the park track. In 2002, we donated five hardwood seats and to this day we maintain representation on the Management Committee of Reserve. As a Rotarian, I'm very proud of our history and continuing participation with Mary Cantross. Another Rotarian, my dad, Bert Brooker, was involved right from the start, and I was one of the kids who spent countless hours here playing on the grass, catching leeches in the creek, and honing my driving skills at 15 by taking Bert's falcon for a spin down the Lansbury Road corner, although I was only allowed to do that once. <laughs> Mayor Jamison, Council Mackay, once again, I sincere congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Um, I'll, I'll just uh, do a link with Chris's uh, talk in that I was having a chat to uh, Jack Wilcox, who uh, wrote the historical book earlier today, and I said, you know that you're part of the official ceremonies, Jack? And he goes, what do you mean? And I said, you've got to come up and do the national anthem. And he goes, well, wait till the end, because I can clear the crowd. <laughs> no, he's not part of it. But look, our final speaker today is the councillor who represents the area and also has responsibility for the environment and community portfolio in council. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome councillor Jenny Mackay to the microphone. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, his wife. Thank you for joining us today. Uncle Kenny, thank you for being here. Special guests, fellow councillors, one and all. It's an amazing experience for me to stand here today and humbly thank my fellow councillors, the community of Mullaney and abroad, the Sunshine Coast University, the Friends of Mary Cane Cross Rotary for the opportunity to be a part of this journey. This was Mark III for this reserve. The then state government, the Labor government of the day, did some great work up here in the hinterland and identified some projects that would be good for ecotourism. This was one of them. We embraced the opportunity. We felt the pressure. We knew there'd been two failed attempts before us, so there was no opportunity to go back. I honour and respect our council staff for the magnificent job they also did as we partnered on this journey. Once we shared the vision, and the vision was formulated out of the uh, deed of trust that the family, the Thine family, had left in place many years ago, that was the bottom of the line. 
Every decision that we made, we went back and said, is this what they intended for this reserve? We knew that our facility was ageing. It could no longer meet the deed of trust. It needed to be renewed so the educational opportunity would grow on for tens of decades to come. That's exactly what has been delivered here today. I thank our consultants, and as you know, as the elected arm, we don't have anything to do with the tendering process. But as the cards unfolded, one cannot tell you how delighted I was that at last we had the right people working with the right volunteers, with the right community organisations, with the council, council officers, that we were confident that we would deliver something today that wasn't just something all right. It was something extraordinary. And again, we went back to our council. We had two designs we could have lived with. That wasn't good enough for us. We had to make sure that the final design was going to be the design that shared the story of the park, shared the story of the great contribution by the Fine family and to do the Sunshine Coast Regional Council proud into the future. I think each and every one was on that journey, particularly the clubs. On days when it was quite hot, maybe documents circling, circulating around us that weren't quite as positive as we were about what we could achieve. They stood side by side, together with myself, the council staff, the volunteers, and today we stand with this wonderful facility. I honour the volunteers of the reserve. When Christmas dinner, the menu is probably the biggest consideration, it's not here in this reserve, it is who is going to man the reserve on Christmas Day. Every year we have our faithful, loyal volunteers here to share the wonderful story. This reserve is also special to me because this is where the Mackay clan, before I even joined them, used to come to celebrate special occasions. So the love of Mary Can Cross has been in my veins for a long time. And um, even today, the grandchildren, as they know about the opening today, the little grandson was just five years of age when they came up on a, um, on a tour day with the kindy or prep. And he said, don't worry, as a teacher, if you don't know everything, I can help you because I can fill in the rest. <laughs> but he's also aware that he needs to get up here quickly now because he thinks things have changed and he may not be up to speed. So I also acknowledge our wonderful students from the Mullaney Primary School here today. And to get the tick of approval from them as far as the technical information sharing goes, that's also a great contribution. And affirm it that we have got this right. The beautiful Glasshouse Mountains, it doesn't matter, and we thank the bath today for bringing the rain because it also proved that the design and the planning that have gone into, as per the deed of trust, that the educational story would be told regardless of whether it rained, of whether the sun was shining, and that has been achieved today. We know the pressure's on the reserve, so we don't mind if people just come and have the educational experience internally and then observe what went on in the forest at night. And in the closing, we committed to the environment of the reserve that when the sun goes down over the Glasshouse Mountains, the lights go off here in the facility. So they can get on with their business at night and then the next day the visitors to the park can see the shenanigans that they got up to <laughs> the next morning. So. Thank you all, each and every one of you, and to my fellow councillors, that there wasn't once when the report came to council asking for more decisions, more funding, that you didn't stand up, you didn't trust the council officers, myself, to take the leadership with this, endorsed strongly by the community, that we were making the right decision. So thank you, one and all. <laughs> Um, I, I actually had an oversight. I was looking at the crowd and I actually noticed Leone Wallace. Uh, Leone is actually here representing Andrew Wallace, the federal MP. Uh, obviously, Andrew is down in Canberra because the parliament is sitting. So I apologise, Leone. Yeah, and now, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, Your Excellency, for your listening pleasure, I'd like to introduce Lindsay Pollack and Lizzie O'Keefe who will perform their musical performance piece, Dangerous Song, which combines the human voice with the sounds of endangered and extinct animals.
Hi everybody, I'm Lindsay and this is Lizzie. Hi. And um, I guess we're representing uh, the species um, other than Homo sapien because um, really they're the, they're the most important of all those other species that we share the planet with. And uh, in the Project Dangerous song, we basically use sounds of endangered and extinct animals to create the music along with Lizzie's wonderful voice. So we've just got um, one musical offering for you now, a short one, but we will be playing after uh, the formalities. We're going to be playing for about half an hour. This first piece, um, I'm going to be starting off with the sound here. So I'm controlling all of the animal sounds with this instrument. That's the sound of the now uh, unfortunately extinct kawail um, from Hawaii. And we use um, an endangered and extinct species from all over Australia and all, all over the planet. So um, welcome to this piece, Kawaiu and Yosemite. <laughs> Before we conclude, before we conclude, I'd like to invite Councillor Mackay to undertake one final task. And look, while I've got a captive audience here, it would be remiss of me not to take an advantage to actually just to thank our staff for being involved in this. And 
there's too many to uh, name individually. But I do want to highlight uh, Mitch Carroll, who's been the project manager on this build. Michael Gillies, who's really been the manager for the, the reserve, and a lot of the volunteers and the community would know Michael very well. Chris Allen, who's the manager who uh, interfaces with me, and Andrew Wyant Ryan, who's the director of the infrastructure services area. Hutchinson Builders have been an extraordinary builder to work with. They've come back to the Sunshine Coast and they, they said they wanted to use this as a demonstration project to council and our community, that they want to do great work. They've proven that. Well done. The designers, uh, Gaimo uh, Bailey Architects and Focus Productions, Interpretive Consultants, they deserve special accolades. My other staff, all who are out there, you know who you are. From my heart, I just want to thank you for your contributions on behalf of the community. And for, on behalf of the community, I hope you acknowledge the council staff are here to serve you, and we do as best we can. My councillors, uh, they show extraordinary leadership in very difficult times, and I hope you respect how they operate as a team. If we could just go on to this final bit now with Councillor Mackay, and it's quite an extraordinary thing. If you can look over there, and you can see her. Um, if you turn to the courtyard, she's holding a number of butterflies, and you're going to witness the symbolic release of a variety of butterflies to mark this important occasion. Councillor Janet. <coughs> <laughs> Each of those butterflies have a surname Ken Cross. <laughs> the official proceedings to a close. On behalf of the council and our community, I'd like to thank His Excellency, the Governor, Mayor Mark Jemison, and all of our invited guests for taking the time to attend here today. It is very special. We do appreciate it. I thank you and look forward to the beginning of a new chapter and life at the Mary Cancross Scenic Reserve. Before you leave, I'd like you to, to encourage you to enjoy uh, the refreshments that we've put on and to take the opportunity to wander freely throughout the building and experience all the Discovery Centre has to offer. And if you prefer, you can use one of our fantastic volunteers, and we have a hundred of them now, who will actually be available to take you through and give you a guided tour. They are what makes the difference at this, I guess, destination over many hundreds of other destinations throughout the world. Thank you again, and enjoy the rest of your visit.